On this installment of the White Sneaker Series, we are dissecting the Oliver Cabells. This video is sponsored by Oliver Cabell. And if you want a pair of these, you can get $15 off for the next two weeks with the code ROSEANVILLE. And the information on these shoes is the brand is Oliver Cabell. The style is a low one, the color is white. They're made in Italy and the regular retail price is $188. And the one really interesting thing that these guys do is they have a price breakdown of how much each aspect of their shoes cost. And um, that's really interesting because we can basically see how much they're making per pair of shoes sold. But more importantly and more interestingly, depending on what's inside of these shoes, we can compare it with the common projects and kind of make some educated guesses on how much money they're actually making on their shoes. So let's get to it. I'm gonna start by cutting the sidewall stitching on the outsole, and this is a Margum outsole. It's kind of the industry standard for a high quality cup sole for this style. If you wanna see what makes it different than a cheaper one, check out the Stan Smith video where we kind of do a little comparison between the two. But essentially it's a thicker and a softer outsole than most alternatives out there. So it makes for a comfortable and long lasting outsole. And as for the price of these outsoles, Oliver Cabell says they cost them $6.60 for the pair. So $3.30 for each one, which is, I thought it was gonna be more than that actually. And this outsole is held on by two ways, that sidewall stitching we cut and by the glue on the bottom that we're starting to peel it away from now. And now that the outsole is removed, I'm gonna peel back this little foam layer. And what this is, is a, a little filler layer that fills in the void left by the way that the upper is curled underneath of the insole and whatever else is on the inside. So you don't have an uneven uh, spots inside of the shoe. And we also saw a similar material inside of the Common Projects. It just didn't go the full length of the shoe like it does in these Oliver Cabells. Now I'm gonna start peeling away the upper that's been pulled and tucked underneath of the insole. And you might expect to see the, the white of the leather underneath of here, but the way that they make these shoes is they pull and kind of tuck the leather to give it that sh the shape of the shoe. So that creates high spots and low spots as it's rolled in the toe and the heel. So to remove that, they sand it all nice and flat. And that way it creates just a little bit of a void that was able to be filled in by that little strip of foam that we, re that we removed previously. And this and the next few steps, we're gonna count as the cutting, manufacturing, and quality control aspect of the cost that Oliver Cabell says is $34.88. And you can kind of see what I was talking about with the folds as I get this toe area unglued. It starts to kind of unfold like an accordion where they had to roll and fold and compress the leather to get that complex shape of the toe. And now we're to the heel area. And this is nailed just like the Common Projects, except for these use steel nails instead of the brass nails in the Common Projects. And I talked to Scott, the owner of Oliver Cabell, and he told me that they actually don't hand last these like I thought they did in the Common Projects. It's actually a machine that pulls and puckers the leather and then nails it down. And you might see these nails and kind of think, ooh, I don't want nails poking into my heel, but they, they're actually designed to clinch over to create a hook. And the way that they do this is as the, the nail is driven into the heel by that machine, they hit a hard metal plate on the last that's on the inside of the shoe and that point gets curled over. And that does one of two things. First thing is it prevents that sharp point from ever hitting your heel or piercing your skin or anything. And secondly, that little hook it creates adds a little bit of strength so that's not gonna pull through as easily if you really start wearing these shoes out. Now that we got it completely removed, you can see where those nails went through the insole, hit that last and curled over. Now I'm gonna start separating this red compressed cardboard layer from the Texon fiberboard. And this compressed cardboard gives you a platform that equally distributes the weight of your foot amongst the cells inside of the outsole. And as we're getting this torn apart, you can start to see the shank inside of here. And I'm still not 100% sure what the shank does that the compressed cardboard doesn't do. And lots of people had opinions um, from the Common Projects video. And one that really made sense to me was it, it helps prevent over flexing of the shoe that might pop the glue and some of the stitching and some of the layers inside of the shoe that might cause irreparable damage. But uh, let me know what you think because I learned a lot from the comment sections and I appreciate your guys' input because I'm not a cobbler, I'm a leather worker. So I'm learning a lot of this as I go along kind of with you guys. The next layer up, we've got the fiberboard insole 
And fiberboard, it kind of breaks into the shape of your foot and creates a footprint inside of the shoe. This gives you a little bit more support, makes it a little more custom fit. And these three layers, the fiberboard, the shank, and the compressed cardboard are almost identical to the layers in the common projects. Next, we've got the removable molded insert that has a layer of calfskin leather on top. It looks like it's the same leather as the liner. It's made in Italy and costs $3.80. And now to the really interesting parts of the shoe. So I'm gonna cut this seam so we can start getting to that counter. And it looks like it's a leather counter. And another thing that's kind of interesting as I'm getting this um, branded name patch torn off is all of the gold lettering on these shoes is screen printed instead of foil stamped. And that's one of those little things that I never would have noticed unless I was doing the sponsored video and I was able to talk to the people who make these products. And that's probably the best part and maybe the most advantageous part about doing a sponsored video is, is the conversations and the questions I'm able to ask the people who make the shoes to give you guys a little bit more insight, a little bit more information, a little more educated uh, understanding of how these products are built. Because trying to get in contact with the companies that aren't sponsoring the videos, it's it's nearly impossible to get straight answers from. They don't want to talk to somebody that's cutting their stuff apart. So there's pros and cons to sponsored content, you know, and the cons being that uh, occasionally a little bias sneaks through no matter how perfect I try to be. And as I get these layers torn apart a little bit more, we can see it's actually the exact same compressed leather counter that was in the common projects. And the thing I really like about these counters is they don't just stop at the heel. They kind of wrap around the sides of the shoe and that gives the shoe a little bit more vertical structure around the sides. Now that we got the counter removed, I'm gonna start separating the lining leather from the upper leather or the outer leather. And this is an Italian chrome tanned calfskin, just like the upper, but it's a different leather than the upper material or upper leather. Um, it's It's got a heavier coating of pigment on top. It's a little bit thinner. It has a little more stretch and it just, it just has a different feel to it. Compared to the Common Projects lining leather, it's almost identical. I think it might even be the exact same leather. It has the exact same thickness, the exact same feel and stretch. Um, so it's, it's very similar, if not the exact same. And Oliver Cabell prices this at $8.12. So for about the same amount of leather as the outer leather or the upper leather, it's about a third of the price. So even by price, it's a cheaper leather, but that's fine because it's not a structural leather, it's just a lining leather. Usually, it's pretty common to have a cheaper leather on the inside. Next, I'm removing the counter cover that's just inside of the heel. And just like the common projects, it's flipped flesh side out. But as I'm getting this removed, it looks like they thin this out. That top layer of white uh, pigmented leather is gone and it's only 0.7 millimeters thick. So I'm not really sure why they do this because it would just make the leather weaker. Maybe it has something to do with making the adhesion of the glue stronger. I don't know, let me know, let me know what you guys think. Now to the upper leather and removing the shoelaces. And everyone always gets so mad at me when I cut shoelaces, but it's fun to do and it's good for the ASMR. And people are like, donate it to your local Goodwill. I'm like, what, what are they gonna do with a single shoelace? But whatever, it's funny. So let's talk about the upper leather while I'm getting the tongue and everything else torn apart. So this is a full grain Italian chrome tanned calf skin. And this is the exact same thickness as the common projects at 1.4 millimeters. And talking to Scott, the owner of Oliver Cabell, he says that this leather is from the exact same tannery that the common projects get their leather from. But it's a different type of leather from that tannery. This leather has a little bit more oil worked into it, so it's a little bit softer. It has a little bit more of a dull shine. It's a little more supple than the common projects. And they price this at $26.04. And if you check the prices on some of the high-end calfskin on some specialty leather sites, they sell for about $12 a square foot, but those prices are marked up by probably around 30%. So let's say this leather costs about $8.50. So if I lay out the parts after getting this cut apart, it looks like they use about two and a half to three square feet of leather for both shoes. That gets us $21.25, but not all the hide is suitable to use in the upper part of the shoe. So if we factor in maybe like a 30% loss in the hide, that gets us within the right ballpark of that $26. So I feel like that's a pretty fair estimate on the price of the leather. And that makes me feel better about the prices they quoted on everything else because the leather is the one thing that I can kind of figure out based on my knowledge of leather and I feel like it's a pretty fair price. So I feel like their other prices are probably within the right ballpark. Now that we got a grand total on how much it costs Oliver Cabell to make a pair of their shoes, we can see they're making just a skosh over $75 per pair of shoes sold. 
And if we compare that to the common projects, these shoes are virtually identical. There's not, there's nothing inside the common projects that I see that would make them cost any more to make than the Oliver Cabells. Don't get me wrong, I don't think the pricing of the common projects is wrong or unethical. I think you should be able to sell something for as much as you want or as much as people are willing to pay for it. Um, but now we just know with fairly definitive proof that Common Projects is making a killing on their shoes. And maybe more importantly, we can see by cutting these in half and dissecting them, you can get just as good of a shoe in Oliver Cabell's for a fraction of the price. So let me know what you guys think. Did I get anything wrong? Am I completely off on this? If I am, let me know. Thanks for everything you guys do. And uh, remember, if you want $15 off, of a pair of Oliver Cabells for the next two weeks. Use the code ROSEANVIL at checkout and uh, get yourself a pair of Oliver Cabells. Thanks, see ya. And I almost forgot, the. Uh, here's the footage of this being cut in half on the bandsaw for you psychos that just like to see stuff cut in half. <laughs>